In this video and the next one, we're going to cover some more advanced HIIT protocols. As I mentioned earlier, you'll want to build up to a good level of basic fitness before you attempt any of these. Once you have though, you'll find you're quickly able to take your fitness to the next level. We have already mentioned Tabata, which is one of the best known examples of HIIT and one of the most efficient and brutally effective options for burning lots of fat and at the same time toning and building muscle. The best thing about Tabata? It takes only four minutes to get an incredibly intense workout. And that's because the split is incredibly short, consisting of 20 seconds of high intensity and 10 seconds of rest. You then repeat the process for a total of eight times. 20 seconds might not sound like a long period of high intensity, but when you only have 10 seconds of rest between each burst, you'll find it becomes incredibly taxing and your body will be begging you to stop towards the end. This is ideal because it will train your ability to recover and to remove the lactate and metabolites from your system so that you're ready to return to your first two energy systems to provide fuel. You can use Tabata for running, but actually it's arguably more popular when combined with other exercises such as those resistance cardio methods we discussed in the last video. Grab a 30 kilogram kettlebell and perform Tabata using that, and you'll be completely exhausted by the end and should be able to feel your heart racing in your chest. Another good option is to use some form of jumping exercise, such as jack-in-the-boxes or tuck jumps. You can even vary it up by creating a circuit that allows you to go from one exercise to another. We'll look at this more in subsequent videos. Note that if you find Tabata too punishing to begin with, you can perform fewer repetitions. Four circuits of Tabata is more than hard enough, but it doesn't have the unwanted side effect of making your heart burst out through your ribcage. Tabata is a strange way of training because it will tax you incredibly in a short space of time, but it isn't particularly effective on its own for weight loss or body transformations due to its brevity. A solution is to use Tabata as what is known as a finisher. A finisher is a type of workout you do at the end of another workout. So if you have completed a weightlifting session or perhaps a session of regular steady state cardio, you can incorporate Tabata at the end to finish off and thereby maximize your calorie burn for the rest of the day while depleting any and all remaining glycogen stores. Note as well that Tabata is unique from the HIIT workouts we've looked at so far in as much as it has a real rest period rather than a period of lighter activity. You can swap this for active recovery if you prefer and do that by holding plank for example or by jogging very lightly on the spot. A side note that applies to Tabata in particular but also to all these HIIT workouts to a degree, is just how powerful this is for training your mental discipline. When you're absolutely exhausted, pushing yourself to the absolute limit again can be incredibly hard. This requires a lot of mental discipline and self-control, and that is actually one of the things that is most exciting and beneficial about HIIT in general. If you can complete a punishing round of Tabata, well, you can complete anything. Finding Tabata too easy? Want more of a challenge? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Okay, as it happens though, if you're that sadistic, I do happen to have something even worse up my sleeve. And this is also a great choice if you're someone who is interested in building muscle and creating a really ripped physique. Say hello to cardio acceleration. Essentially, cardio acceleration is a perversion of HIIT and resistance training that combines a full gym workout with a cardio workout. Normally, 
If you're working out in the gym in order to build muscle, you will do so by performing exercises as reps and sets. You perform a set of 6, 8, 10 or 12 exercises and then you rest for a minute before going again. What you're doing in this case is building up metabolites in the muscle that stimulate growth and you're creating micro-tears. The heavy weight means you're using your fastest twitch muscle fibre, which means you'll be relying on glycogen and ATP stored in the muscle. So you need to pause after performing those 10 reps in order to build up the strength to go again for the next round. The most common protocol for the gym is to perform three sets of 10 reps on each exercise. Cardio acceleration turns this into a monstrosity of a challenge though by removing the minute rest in between each exercise. You're still going to give the muscle a rest but you're no longer going to give your body a rest because you're going to perform some kind of cardio exercises such as tuck jumps, high knees, sprinting, step machine, skipping, etc. And you're going to do this with high intensity. What you also do is to target the muscles that you aren't using. So if you just perform bench press, then you won't use boxing as your cardio to pair it with because that will train the pecs and shoulders again. Likewise, if you just did squats, you're not going to train with kettlebell swings or tuck jumps. Cardio acceleration works absolute wonders for your body because it allows you to get all the benefits of a weightlifting workout and all the benefits of a cardio workout rolled into one. That means you'll build muscle while at the same time burning fat. What's more, you'll be able to keep your heart rate high for your entire weightlifting routine. This means that you'll burn an incredible number of calories and specifically several hundred percent more. Because you're training the upper body and the lower body intermittently, this also has the advantage of directing blood from the top to the bottom. In other words, you'll need plenty of oxygen and nutrients in your biceps for those curls and then you'll need them in your legs for that sprinting. Thus, your heart is working even harder to send the blood up and down and up and down and you'll burn even more calories. The hormonal response to this kind of training is also massive. There are downsides too though, of course. The first is that cardio acceleration is absolutely horrendous to go through. This is a serious challenge and should only be attempted once you're very fit and very strong already. It's also something you probably won't want to do very regularly. The other downside is that you won't build as much muscle as you would do from a regular weightlifting workout. That's because you'll be depleting your strength and thus won't be able to perform your lifts with as much weight or as good a technique. If your aim is to become a massive bodybuilder type, then you should stay away from cardio acceleration. However, if your aim is to become a lean machine who would look incredible on the cover of a fitness magazine, then you should think about it. Just be ready for a real challenge. There are a couple of other advanced HIIT protocols that you might also want to try, and I'll talk about those in the next video. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.